So upon hearing the name of this movie, I was really hoping it was going to be the long-awaited, or at least long-awaited to me, sequel continuing the story of everybody's favorite small engine repair guru, Carl. I reckon you can make me some biscuits and mustard. It ain't got no gas in it. Mm-hmm. Small Engine Repair is brought to us by director John Polano and stars John Polano, John Bernthal, and Shay Wingo. So Small Engine Repair is a dark comedy drama that starts as one thing and then becomes something totally different. Like, I mean, you just don't see where this movie's going. And once it gets there, you're like, holy shit, how did we get here? For fear of ruining anything, I'm gonna keep it a little vague, especially when it comes to the second half of the film. But basically, we follow three childhood friends played by Polano, Bernthal, and Wingham, who after having a bit of a falling out, decide one night to come back together and break bread. These guys are the best of friends, they've been together since they were kids, and they all kind of banded together when the character of Frank played by John Polano's daughter was born to help raise her because her mom is kind of a shitbag. These guys don't all have the answers or anything and they're not even like the best role models in the world but they are trying to be the best. They're not bad people. They're pretty good guys. And you see that they would all do anything for each other especially Frank's daughter Crystal. Crystal gets accepted to a nice college. Her mother while still kind of a wild card is starting to clean up her act. Frank's small engine repair business is doing pretty good and these lifelong friends who hit a speed bump are coming back together so life overall on the surface at least is pretty good but then something happens and this is the part that I'm gonna start to be kind of vague about what's going on now on a side note I would recommend that if you are interested in watching this movie after my review maybe stay away from the trailer the trailer doesn't give everything away but there are some key points to the film that the trailer does give away I get why they put it there to kind of hook people in to bring them in to want to watch the movie but me going into it not having seen that trailer made my viewing experience all that much better. I knew nothing about it and that is kind of how the movie is meant to be viewed. So when this thing comes up and our characters are put into a bit of a precarious situation, things get really dark for a bit. Like really dark at times and kind of heavy also in some moments. The vast majority of this movie kind of has a light jovial tone to it. But there are some moments that pop up that really hit you hard. They built these characters up to where you do actually care about them so when these things start to happen to them and you find out these new revelations closer to the end of the film it is quite affecting basically we have some characters that have been built up that we really do like that have been put in this impossible bad situation that we just don't know how they're gonna get out of they got a few different options but some of those options are going to lead them down some really bad paths now the way that they do get out of it I will say it's darkly comedic it's pretty funny and the way that they do it in the film film is, I mean, I, I'm not gonna ruin it, of course, but it's okay that, yeah, they did that, and I guess, I guess that would work, admittedly, especially within the confines of the film. The execution of this part of the film is kind of funny, I will say that. And that's something this movie was really good at, its tone. The tone of this film would swing from one side to the other, but it never felt inconsistent. These tonal changes make sense within the story. There are a number of times within the same scene that we are laughing it up one moment, and the next, it's a bit of a tearjerker or kind of horrifying. But these tonal shifts are done expertly here. This is a very well constructed film. Looking into it, it is based on a play that writer, director, actor Paul Leone put on for years before developing it into the cinematic version. So they clearly had time to get all that stuff right. And that does pay off here because we got a really tight, interesting, funny at times, horrifying at times, and even really hit you in the feels at times flick here. I really enjoyed this movie and there are some parts parts in particular here that really did speak to me and hit me a bit hard as a father. Now that's not to say that people without kids won't enjoy this film. I think you absolutely can. I think everybody can understand what the movie is saying here. But as a father, there were some parts in this film that hit me particularly hard. For the most part, the story did keep me guessing. Now, as we led up to the big reveal that happened in the film, I will say I started to catch on. But I think we're supposed to. The way the movie presents it to us, we're supposed to slowly come to this conclusion. 
because as we're leading to this thing, we start to get the idea that something else is going on that we don't know. And as we start to figure out what that something is, it's less about at that point what's going on as to what's going to happen now because of this thing. Now the ending of the film, I think that some people might have a bit of an issue with. It's not terrible or anything, and I actually did enjoy it, but it is kind of abrupt in some ways. And I will say that right there at the very end of the film, this is the part where the tone is a bit in contrast with itself. We have a couple of tonal swings right there at the end that for the most part do work, but there is one right there at the end that is a little bit more abrupt than I liked. I didn't hate it, it didn't ruin the movie or the ending, but I did notice it. It's like it could have used just a slight bit more to transition from this tone to that tone. Overall though, I was very happy with the story and the conclusion of the film. Our performances are all really good here too. Our three leads played by Polano, Bernthal, and Wingham all do a great job, and while we are mainly focused on Polano's Frank character, I will say that the character with the most range would probably be Bernthal Sueno. His character is given the opportunity to show the most range out of everyone, and while he's not necessarily playing totally against type of the kind of characters he typically plays, I did like how instead of playing like a big bad tough character this time around, Bernthal is playing a guy who is fairly sensitive and kind of childlike, but he acts like he's a big bad tough guy all the time. Now that being said, that doesn't take anything away from the other performances, because everybody else did a great job too. Polano, for instance, as our main Frank, while his character doesn't display as much range as, say, Bernthal Sueno, he's absolutely doing a great job. A lot of his performance is internal, and some of it we don't really know until we know the big reveal. Looking back at his performance, it's kind of like, oh, okay, I'm seeing a lot more in this performance now. It's much more nuanced. Overall, all the performances were extremely solid, and some were even pretty great. Guys, Small Engine Repair was a thoroughly entertaining little film about three childhood friends that end up getting in over their heads. While the ending of the film may put some viewers off, I think that most people are going to find something to like here. It's got a really interesting, entertaining little story that gets really dark and you just don't see it coming. It knows when to be funny, it knows when to be dark, and it also knows when it needs to come in and hit you in the feels. And while it's not perfect, and it's probably not one you're gonna watch more than once, that one time is gonna be a great watch, and it's absolutely worth a rent. All he wanted was hey, this. I have to return some videotape. Going into this thing, I had absolutely no idea what to expect, and I was pleasantly surprised by this little gem. So if you're looking for an entertaining, yet dark at times little flick, then check out Small Engine Repair one night. I think you'll have a pretty good time with it. So there it is, guys, my review of Small Engine Repair. Mm -hmm. If you enjoyed, want more content like this, hit that subscribe button and help my little channel grow. If you want to help out the channel, check out my Patreon in the description below and become a jarhead and get some of the awesome benefits that go along with that like these guys. And possibly join my top tier and become a bad motherfucker like my man Greg. If you liked what I had to say, give me a like. If not, let me know in the comments below why. And as always, stay sexy, Manchester. What's going on here, Frank? I ruined Crystal's life. We're gonna kill him. How are we gonna get out of this? You didn't think about it. No, no. So as I mentioned, the way that our characters resolve this situation that I was being kind of vague about and I will continue to be vague about here is because one of the three friends has to do a thing. I know that's really vague, but when you see the movie, you'll you'll know exactly what thing I'm talking about. And I just gotta say that this guy, what he does for his friend and essentially his, his family, not his blood family, but his family of friends, man, I, I just wish I had friends like that because that is a real friend what he did there. Man, that shit was fucked up. He really took one for the team, or actually I guess he gave one for the team, but you know, you'll see. Man, that shit's fucked up. Mm-hmm.